Hey Imperfect Life Insiders, this is Kamira again with ImperfectLife.com where I share my journey and experience navigating life after pet loss through inspiration and art. If this is your first time watching a video or listening to the video from me or my channel, this channel is for pet parents and those that have lost a beloved pet and, is, and trying to navigate life after pet loss. Um, I like to give inspirational content to help others feel validated and move forward through the grieving process, living life day to day. So today's topic, I just wanted to um, have a fun, more lighthearted, reflective um, post or video regarding 10 life lessons my cats taught me about life. So in retrospect, just to quickly give a quick recap of what I've been through or my my experience with pet loss. I had two cats. My first one was Precious. She passed away about, I think, eight years old when I had first moved to New York. Unexpectedly, the same day we moved, she passed away. If she did have an underlying heart murmur condition. She had a happy, full life, but I think combined with the um, flying the air uh, with her aging and also her heart murmur, I think her body probably could not take it. She did um, pass away at home in my arms. Um, she was my first love. I love Precious. And my second cat, um, Dusty, she lived to be 14, almost 14. She passed away um, due to a cancerous um, thyroid tumor. Um, she was my soul cat, my heart cat had a temperament of a puppy really. She was um, Siamese calico mix. But um, again, just uh, the love of my life. She's my heart cat, I love her to death. Um, but they're both with me in spirit, always around. I feel like the love never dies when it comes to our pets. And we hold a place in our hearts for them forever. And with that said, I would like to share with you 10 life lessons my cats taught me about life. Um, so number one uh, is basically have patience. <laughs> if you have a pet, whether it's a cat or a dog, um, or even I guess maybe a horse, bunny, bird, one of the things that um, you kind of notice, especially when you get up in the mornings, they will, I'm not going to say that they're the most patient, but when they know a treat is coming or their breakfast is coming, they are in their best behavior. So um, one of the things that I love about cats is that they, just like their you know, predecessors, the lions and tigers, they will wait in the hunt and, and stay in the lurch and have so much patience for the prize. So that's one thing. I love that fact about them. So one is to have patience. Number two, every once in a while, take a chance and jump. I like this as a metaphor for life. Um, our cats and dogs love to leap and take a chance. And what is the saying? Don't leap before you think. But I kind of feel like our pets go, they act first and think later. Like they live in the moment. So uh, number two, I would say every once in a while, take a chance and jump. Take a, a leap of faith, whether that be your career or maybe something you've always wanted to try. Maybe you're scared to fail, but I kind of feel like when it comes to life, especially the older you get, you probably have more of a fear of regret of not trying out something than trying something and failing. So I kind of like that life lesson. That's one of the things I've learned just by watching them. They will, you know, take a chance and jump the leap of faith. And usually they make it just fine. Like quite literally, they could take a jump across from one piece of furniture to the next. They may not always make it, but most times they do. So it's kind of a metaphor for life. The third one, just being there counts. Um, I think this is uh, so important. It kind of segues into unconditional love. But I have been in instances where I've had life-altering events happen in my personal life, whether it's family issues or physically being injured, and they are just literally there. They can't, you know, as a cat, dog, 
horse, bird, rabbit, whatever, but they know, they understand that um, their human, their guardian, their parent is injured or incapacitated or otherwise not themselves. They understand, but just then being there, laying next to you, it's so comforting. So that's one of the, the lessons that I have learned. Next, we are all wonderfully and beautifully made. Um, one of the things that I love about our pets that they teach us is they don't care what you look like. They don't care you're not a size two or, you know, look a certain way. They just care and respect and love you unconditionally just the way you are. So we are all wonderfully and beautifully made. Number five, be grateful. One of the things that I learned, not only through having cats of my own, but also through fostering, is pets are so grateful, especially those that have been adopted or taken in off the street or saved from a shelter or even elderly pets that have been rescued or rehomed. They are so grateful. Um, so that's another life lesson. Just have gratitude for the small things. Not everything in life goes perfect in our lives, but it's so important to have a sense of gratitude for those things which are going right in your life. Because at the end of the day, there's always someone in the world that is doing worse off. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, number six, less is more. I kind of relate this to a metaphor regarding not only living a life of minimalism, not excess, but also when it comes to eating too. My cat Dusty was a calico Siamese mix and although she was slender, she wouldn't like, in comparison to my cat Precious, Precious would, when it was feeding time, like go all in hoard and stuff her face at a like racing pace, but Dusty was more of like, oh, I'll, I'll nosh a little here, a little there throughout the day. And she was very active and curious and just going on about her day of rambunctious, very active. So I kind of like that kind of life lesson and equate it to life where less is more, less clutter, less um, materialistic things, just less is more. What, you know, it's nice to treat yourself once in a while, but having just the basics is enough for me. Um, and then same with the food, you know, <laughs> we all know uh, less junk food or less foods that are not healthy for you or if you can eliminate it is giving you more value in your health. So that's something to keep in mind. Number seven, sleep is precious. We underestimate the value of sleep. I know I'm one that can work on this, um, but definitely getting your sleep, having cats, we as cat owners know that cats love getting their sleep and their rest. So that's one thing that we can learn is a good life lesson. Uh, have getting enough sleep and rest, letting your body replenish itself and rejuvenate is important. So number eight, Playtime is food for the soul. Playtime is food for the soul. It's important, along with sleep, to rejuvenate. I feel like playtime or getting involved in hobbies, that could be, for me personally, that's painting, drawing, reading. Others in playtime or fun activities could involve hiking, zip lining, you know, um, skiing, bowling other activities, just taking a walk outside. I think I said hiking before, maybe shopping. <laughs> I mean, so whatever feeds your soul, I think it's important to incorporate incorporate that in your life. Because this, hey, you know, we need to live our lives. We can't just um, live a life where we are going through the motions. Our pets never live their lives that way. They live in the moment. And I feel like they want us to too. That's a lesson they teach us. So have some play time. Number nine, live in the moment. Enjoy the quiet moments as well. Just like I touched on before, incorporate play time, but live in the moment. Today is a gift and tomorrow is not promised. So do so accordingly. You don't have to have such a busy life where it's always go, 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 but also take time to also enjoy the quiet moments, quiet time. You can sit in a park or lay in the grass, have a quiet time in nature, 
um, as it gets colder, curl up with a good book or even just lay, you know, lay in bed or lay on the couch, listen to um, in instrumental music. You can listen to jazz or whatever you like, classical, contemporary, just or even um, I think what's popular now is even like sometimes frequency music, just spa type music or anything that lets your mind calm itself so take time to live in the moment but also enjoy some quiet moments as well it's important to let your mind be at ease and last but not least number 10 unconditional love that's number 10 is one of the most important life lessons my cats have taught me um, in this life is to have unconditional love um, our pets are masters. <laughs> they have a PhD in unconditional love. That is um, the greatest gift any pet parent can have is the love, unconditional love, no matter what we look like. Sometimes even they treat us as pets, treat us better than us as humans treat animals any day of the week. So just have gratitude and a sense of gratitude and understanding that unconditional love is the greatest gift that you can experience however long that may have been with your pet or your loved one so those are my top 10 life lessons my cats have taught me about life have any of these life lessons resonated with you leave a comment below i would love to hear your thoughts if you want to hear or read more about these life lessons and how they impacted my life visit my um, blog at imperfectlife.com. I will leave a link in the description box below so you can check out that blog post. But until next time, I just wanted you uh, to stay encouraged and share this happier um, post 10 life lessons my cats taught me about life when they were living to share it with you. I hope some of these lessons resonated with you. Let me know by leaving a comment below and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, I will catch you later. Have a great day 